So, is time traveling only possible in movies? What if I told you that you go into the future every time you fly in a plane? And I don't mean the time zones changing. Also, time slows down for your brain during long travels. I have not much time to explain this, but I'll try. Before you go time traveling on an airplane, here's one whoa fact. We all live in the past, not the present. It's about how our brain works. It receives information through the eyes, ears, and other parts of the body, analyzes it, and then we realize what's happening around us. The speed of this whole process is about 80 milliseconds, which is 8 hundredths of a second. So the human brain perceives the present only after a jiffy, which means we all live a little bit in the past. And now it's time to set off for the future. Sit back and fasten your seatbelts. Every time you move in space, as in walking, running, driving a car, or flying, time for you slows down a bit relative to people and objects staying still. Scientists use the ultra-precise atomic clock to measure the difference in the speed of time. Despite its name, this clock is absolutely safe. It just records the vibrations of atoms instead of measuring out seconds. In short, this is the most accurate clock in the world. So much so, in fact, that it only gets a second late once in 3.7 billion years. I won't be around then, so just trust me on this. So scientists took two atomic clocks. Either of them had an aluminum atom within that vibrated trillions of times per second. Scientists applied a weak electric field to one of the clocks, making the atom move. At the end of the experiment, the clock that moved was a fraction of a second behind. It works the same for us on board an airplane. Time slows down for us too, but so imperceptibly that it doesn't matter. But gravity also makes the time go slower. The closer you are to the gravitational source, that is the Earth, the slower the time goes. Say there are two identical twins. One lives on the ground floor of the Empire State Building, and the other on the top of it. 80 years later, the second twin will be 90 billionth of a second older than the twin who lives on the ground floor. It's all about the changes in the molecular structure of their bodies. So, when you fly in an airplane at a high altitude, where gravity is weaker, you get older by a few nanoseconds faster. And this happens during each flight. But what if the plane speed was much higher? What if it could accelerate to almost the speed of light? Let me remind you that it's 670 million miles per hour. So if you fly almost at this speed, the time will slow down by a lot. Two hours in the cabin will transform into two decades on Earth. And if you somehow go faster than the speed of light, then the cause and effect relationship may be violated. According to the law of nature, a cause comes first and then the effect. In simple terms, this means that you ask the flight attendant for water first and then you got it. It can't be that you get the water and then ask for it. Unless you've beaten the speed of light, then it can. Photons, the light particles, cover the distance from the sun to Earth in 8 minutes. Having overcome the speed of light on our plane, we are catching up with the photons that were launched from the sun 8 minutes ago. Our speed increases, and we catch up with the photons that the sun launched yesterday. Then a week ago, a month, a year. We're flying into the past. We arrive at Earth 150 million years ago. Dinosaurs, ammonites, and sea monsters are not even the most interesting stuff you can find here. A day on ancient Earth lasts 23 hours instead of 24. The astronomical day of Earth increases by 2 milliseconds every century. So, in 200 million years' time, there will already be 25 hours in a day. This happens because our planet's rotation slows down, thanks to the sea and ocean tides. Ok, let's go back to the future. Not in our time, though, but in about 1500 BCE, at the time when people learned to determine the time by the sundial. The shadow on the sundial moves from left to right. This is the reason why the hands of clocks go in this direction. All right, all aboard again! To England of the 19th century. It was here John Henry Belleville learned to earn with the help of time. The essence of the business was that every day, Mr. Belleville set his watch to Greenwich Mean Time at the observatory in person, and then drove around to its clients' homes and set them the exact Greenwich time for a fee. 
The business flourished for long after he was gone, and his daughter continued his efforts until her own old age. That's it! We're back in our time in 2020. And the last fact before you leave the cabin. If we pack the history of our planet into 24 hours, humankind would appear at 11.59 p.m. in the very last minute of the day. After such an eventful time journey, it's important to note that time slowed down not only on the plane, but inside our brains, too. Perceived time gets slower for us when we move. It's all about emotions. When every day is filled with new experiences, it seems to us that time stretches, slows down, or sometimes stops at all. But seconds go on ticking away as usual. Our brain perceives the past that was full of events very differently. Besides the real objective time, each person has their own subjective sense of time. In short, we have an internal timer in our heads. This is proved by one simple experiment called the oddball paradigm. You're sitting in front of a computer, looking at pictures of shoes changing in quick succession. Suddenly, a picture of a flower appears, but only once. And although its screen time is the same as that of all the rest, it will seem to you that the flower stayed on the screen for much longer than the shoes. This happens because monotony speeds up time. Many pictures with shoes become monotonous, while the flower dilutes this drag and seems longer. Same goes for a calm and repetitive lifestyle. If all you do every single day is a routine, then even if your life is long, you'll perceive it as extremely short. Here's another example. When you climb a high mountain somewhere in another country, time stretches for you. And when you're filling out reports in the office, a whole week can fly by in the blink of an eye. Did you notice that time in childhood dragged on much more slowly? The week before Christmas seemed like an eternity. Well, as an adult, you may be wondering where the past year has gone so quickly. This happens because we experience new emotions and get new experiences every hour of every new day in childhood. But when we grow up, our life gains a certain order, and we don't have time to do something new. Days and weeks become too much alike. Time flies, and we don't remember a lot. But there is a solution – traveling. It has a special magic. During a journey, we immerse ourselves in the unknown. We visit new places, move from one city to another, pay more attention to details, learn new and exciting things. We become children again for a short while, and time slows down for us. The brain begins to slow down the perception of time to help us understand and learn what is happening around us. And then it seems to us that the days are getting longer. Life is expanding. The takeaway? Be more like a banana. Yep, to stay green, keep growing. Otherwise, when you ripen, you'll just rot. Hey, but either way, you'll still have appeal. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give the video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other cool videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right. And remember, stay on the bright side of life.